Hello and welcome to another technical takedown the hard way in today's video. It has been some time, hasn't it guys? Well, I have a good reason for not posting any videos over the past couple of weeks. And the reason is this. Yes, two weeks ago, my wife gave birth to a beautiful boy. He is so awesome, really is. And I'm so proud of him and I'm proud of her and I've got to, you know, say thank you for everything that they have done over the last couple of weeks because they have certainly given me a new lease of life. Yes, I've got a two year old already, but now we have another boy who we're going to be bringing along on this expedition with us. And God knows we need some male energy with us. Don't get me wrong, I love the women, I love them, you know, but it, it's just, you know, it's cool to have a boy, you know. We're going to be going into the particulars of how things are going to change the dynamic because we, we've already made a video about uh, how it's going to be bringing two children along with us but i want to make a video specifically about bringing a young baby along with us he's only going to be four months old by the time we are on the way so it's important that we get the baby ready so I want to show you what that's all about. If you want to take a look for yourself, we have a video that I have made on Overland Fam, so please give that a watch. The link is in the description. But in today's technical takedown, we're going to take a look at fuel prices. I have made a video about fuel prices before. At this present moment, I'm speaking to you from Vienna. This city is quite unique because we have a number of international borders that are in very close proximity to this city. So we're in Austria at this present moment, but literally one hour of the road, you have the border with uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, 30 minutes down to the east, you will have the border with uh, Slovakia. In fact, the Slovakian capital city is only a 40 minute drive from where I am standing right now, Bratislava. In another 45 minutes or so, south East of here, we have the country of Hungary. We have many countries that surround us. And for that reason, we are able to take a look at the prices of fuel in all those particular countries. Okay, so if you look at the price of fuel here, currently at this moment, it's about one euro 96. Over the past, well, I don't know, three months, I would say, it's been nice actually to watch the price of fuel steadily for go down and down. So at its highest, I think we had two euros 10 per litre, but gradually things have eased and it went all the way down to one euro 68 only, what, four weeks ago. Slowly but surely though, the prices have started to creep up and up again. So right now in Vienna, the cheapest price of fuel that we normally get from a turmoil uh, pump station uh, or an Avanti. The fuel from there is about one euro 90 at this present moment. Yeah, that is lower than the two euros 10, but it is su still substantially higher from what we were paying last year. We don't have a choice, it has to be sustainable. It's going to carry on like this while there is a lot of instability in the world in terms of the political situation of Russia, along with the sanctions, inflation, uh, the cost of living, uh, the war in Ukraine, everything, everything is having an impact and it's having a negative impact on the price of fuel. But guys, I'm here to tell you that Africa, from Europe anyway, is just a hop and a skip away. And I'm here to tell you that there is a reason why things are going to be slightly different on this long-term overland expedition to Africa. So we're going to get into this today. I'm going to tell you about the particulars of the price of fuel in Africa. First, I'm going to ask you to please like, subscribe and share this video. It is absolutely free to subscribe and absolutely free to like and it literally takes less than a second. So I will thank you in advance for doing so. So where are we now at this present moment? Well, the prices are going up and down and up and down. Let's be honest with ourselves. Most of the OPEC countries do not want to see a fall in the price of fuel. They don't want to see a fall because they are enjoying some of the 
best profits that they have seen in decades. So why do they want to see a, a price fall? No, they don't want to see a price fall. And this has been orchestrated. This isn't an accident. This is a combination of inflation, which is a system which is built there to make rich people rich. But the biggest impact, of course, of energy prices in Europe being so high is the war in Ukraine and the sanctions that have been placed on Russia. So everything is expensive. The price of gas in the United Kingdom, each household is expecting to pay on average £5,000 just for energy next year. For me, that's an unfathomable amount of money, especially if you put into context that we don't heat our houses for half of the year, right? This is gonna have an impact on the overland community uh, in general, right? You have high fuel costs. Most of our vehicles run on diesel or, or they run on benzene. The OPEC countries are the countries that produce oil. They want to make sure that that price stays high for us. It means that those people who were planning to go on long-term overland expeditions, some of them now have to wait a little longer so they can save a little bit more money because of the fluctuations in the price of gas. They just don't know whether they'll be able to afford it three, four, five, six months down the line when they are in outer Mongolia. So they have to save a little bit more money as a safety net. It's really a sad situation. However, things are different in Africa. Why are things different in Africa? Well, uh, well, first of all, let's take a look at the prices of fuel in Africa. So currently at this moment, on average, the price of fuel in Africa, and I'm talking about benzene and diesel, is literally half the price on average as you would get here in Western Europe. So we're talking on average around one euro per litre can be higher. If you go to the Central African Republic, it is $2.39 per litre, okay? That is pretty high anyway, okay? And the prices have fallen, so I'm not sure what that price was when it was at its height. Um, I am now looking at Statista, which is a great website where you can check the price of fuel. It's not in real time, so these prices were from July last month. Oh, the month before, I should say now. We're in September now, aren't we? In Ghana, it is $1.48. That's pretty good per litre. Botswana, which is $1.13 per litre. That's around a euro per litre. Um, or, or one, no, 90 pence per litre at this present moment. In Botswana, Ivory Coast, $1.17 per litre. Democratic Republic of the Congo, $1.17 per litre. Kenya, $1.29 per litre. And the best one of all, Nigeria, 42 American cents for a litre. 42 cents. That is um, 35 euro cent about 35 36 euro cent per liter of benzene in nigeria which is around 30 pence per litre, 32 pence per liter that is a mind blowing that i mean even in my wildest dreams i couldn't think to pay that amount for fuel and you got to recognize that this price is pretty high at this present moment Okay, so normally before the war, that price would have been a little lower, just a little lower. Prices in Africa have not fluctuated so much and there is a good reason why. I'm going to give you a for instance, okay? Like I said in the beginning, we live in an area which is surrounded by multiple countries. We have borders just around the corner from us, okay? If you take fuel from here right now, it would cost you one euro and 90 cents for a diesel litre, okay? But if you just go down the road, 40 minutes, cross the border into Hungary and get the same fuel, it will cost you around half that price. It's gonna cost you less than a euro per litre. Why? That is because of the man, Viktor Orban. The nice man, yes. Uh, the nice man, Viktor Orban, who has kept very good relations with the Kremlin, okay? So, because he's kept very good relations with the Kremlin, he's able to work out a deal. The price of fuel that the 
leader of Hungary, Viktor Orban, is bringing into Hungary at this moment. The, the, the price of fuel that they have negotiated is less than normal, actually. Because Putin really wants to make sure that people know if you support us, if you're on our side, your people, you're not going to pay any penalties. Okay, and this is one way of showing so for Russia to show solidarity with those people who have been their supporters in general over this war and in general, you know, people who are their allies. It's one thing that happened, I mean, in Africa, Africa has in general been a good friend to Russia. And part of that reason is because uh, Russia as a massive country it's never needed to come to africa it's never needed to colonize parts of africa it's never come to africa and taken its people it's never uh, exploited africa for its resources it just didn't need to do so okay so russia was in a privileged position to say no no that's not for us thank you we will expand uh, eastwards but apart from that we're good we're not going to go to Africa so they were never part of the Berlin conference and Africans know this and Africans appreciate this okay and therefore they have managed to really keep very good relations with Russia they want to keep these good relations with Russia they know that the other Western countries that includes the United States have done everything in their power to destroy real growth to destroy political systems within Africa as well as destabilize a lot of African countries so they can take advantage of that situation and take oil, diamonds, gold, resources out of the continent. This is what they have been doing for decades and decades and decades. Okay, So a lot of Africans have aligned themselves, a lot of African countries have aligned themselves with Russia over what is happening with this war. A lot of African a lot of African countries are trying to be pressured into putting sanctions onto Russia, but none of them have broken not yet anyway. So what does this mean in general? It means that the price of fuel in Africa is cheap. It's still the same price as it was before the war. Nothing has changed in regards to fuel prices in Africa. This is part of the reason why there has been a lot more stability when it comes to energy prices within Africa. It's not just because Africa pumps its own oil. It's not just because Nigeria pumps its own oil. It does repump its own oil. It does refine its own oil. But that's not the main reason why it is cheap. The main reason why it is cheap is because they have that flexibility. They don't have to rely on Russia. But even though they don't rely on Russia, there are a lot of countries that see Russia and align themselves with Russia and Russia do everything in their power to make sure that energy prices remain stable in those countries that have remained loyal to Putin. It's not anything to boast about. I, I need to be honest with you. I don't like war, right? Even if it is with you know, people who I perhaps don't get along with myself, I don't I, I, the civilians for me are the people that I always focus on and I don't think it's good for the women, the children and all those other people who are living in uh, the Ukraine at this present moment to have to go through what they go through for reasons which are kind of dubious if you ask me. But to say that Africa has escaped pretty rather well with this one actually is an understatement. We can now focus on getting to Africa and we don't have to worry about playing mind-blowing prices which means Africa the doors are open COVID is starting to settle down it's ready it's there the lion is roaring and ready for you people to go and adventure and you can take advantage of these good prices and you can visit Africa you can tour Africa and you don't have to pay double the prices like you would have done here in Europe or in West or in North America or anywhere else at this present moment Do, are any of you guys planning to go to Africa because of this specific reason any of you guys change your plans and are now planning on going to Africa on a long-term overland journey please let me know in the comment section below it'd be really good to hear your opinion on this so I'd like to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one until the next time Thank you. Ciao.